was happening plebs today we're going to be talking about the biggest monsters in Yu-Gi-Oh and I don't mean that in terms of their attack points I mean this pure physical size So before we get into this video, I just need to set out some simple ground rules. Um, first of all, uh, monsters only, um, because there are some monsters featured on other cards that I'll mention at the end. Um, second, um, there are some cards here that almost actually made like number one easily, but we kind of had to look at the lore and what the monsters were based off of in real life to kind of gauge whether or not they deserved that spot. Um, I'll mention them as we go along and again finally this is kind of just opinion based and it's sort of kind of just down to your interpretation you might look at a monster and think hey that's actually bigger than that monster because of xyz reason um, card art is not something that's definitive art in general um, imagery you can imagine is not something that you can just measure although you can when it's talking about size you could argue that yes you can measure it but really it's kind of just down to your interpretation when you're looking at the card um, so I feel like this list uh, could be completely different based on your opinion and someone else might look at this list and be like yeah that makes sense so again make sure you understand it's completely opinion based so for number 10 we have sneaking in just uh, at number 10 is uh, obelisk um obelisk the tormentor of course everyone knows this card kaiba's god monster um just ahead of slifer and ra and as you can see in the anime in this picture here you can kind of tell that um he it's just a little bit ahead of Ra and Slifer. But the uh, obelisk, uh, as you can see here in this picture as well, he is the size of a Colosseum, um, an actual like arena. So as you can imagine, that is pretty damn big. That's pretty huge. That's pretty huge. So we had to include uh, obelisk at number 10. So for number 9, we have Apocalyphort Towers. A tower, I guess, if we look at it based on other cards uh, that this thing is um, seen on, um, it's you could kind of interpret it as being something that's about the size of probably like an arena the set like bigger than obelisk and i'll give you reasons for that as you will see the next cards it will become clear so number eight we have el shadol shekinaga now el shadol shekinaga is basically construct riding towers and construct is also known as el shadol nephilim and nephilim's are biblical creatures that were essentially like giants or angels of sorts are uh, pretty huge pretty damn big um, and this is kind of where it comes down to your interpretation is a giant bigger than like you know obelisk I would probably say that obelisk is bigger than construct but construct on like on top of towers is probably bigger than obelisk so that's why Shekinaga is ahead of towers for this video Next up, we have what I was actually almost going to put number one, but I thought it would be too much of a stretch, and I knew I'd get so much hate and dislikes for it. Master Hyperion. Master Hyperion is a titan. He is based off the titan Hyperion in Greek mythology. And as you can imagine, a titan is massive. Um, but again, it's down to interpretation. How big is a titan? How big is massive for uh, for a titan? Uh, now, why were you going to, you're probably asking, why would you put him at number one? In his hands, you can see him holding a solar system. Now, I thought it was probably a bit of a stretch of the imagination to assume that Master Hyperion was holding a legitimate solar system in his hand. Decided that it's probably just kind of like an image, like simulation of sorts, like a kind of digital, like kind of thing, like, you know, because Titans are like technologically advanced and all that stuff. I figured it probably made more sense that it was just like a digital solar system rather than the actual solar system. I thought that'd be pretty ridiculous. So no, it's not number one uh, for that reason. But yeah, based on the fact that it is a Titan and Titans um, in Greek mythology are renowned for being absolutely gargantuan sized monsters. In my mind, in my personal opinion, I thought that Hyperion would probably be bigger than Shekinaga Towers and Obelisk. The next one is kind of a funny one. It's, uh, it's Island Turtle. Now, um, this again is down to interpretation. How big is an island? An island, there's, there's islands on this planet that are literally like the size of like a street. Um, there's islands that are the size of cities. Um, it's, it's, it's really hard to say how big is an island. Um, I thought that reasonably, a reasonable sized island would probably be the size of maybe like a couple of football fields put together. Just about, 
Now, on the island's text work, uh, on sorry, on Island Turtle's text work, it says it's commonly mistaken for an island. So chances are people have landed on this monster and thought it was just a normal island. But yeah, so Island Turtle, uh, based on Chinese mythology, um, I believe. I'm not too sure, or some kind of a mythology of sorts. It kind of all comes together in a lot of different cultures, but basically there's a theory that the entire planet is on the back of a turtle floating in the sea, and the turtle, like, goes along. And that's life. Uh, we're just on one big giant turtle. So looking at it from that angle, island turtle could probably be the size of, like, a continent. So, yeah, it's kind of just down to interpretation. I thought that island turtle would probably be the size of, like, maybe, like, a town, half a town, something like that. So... I decided to put it in here. Next up, we have Apocalyphor Skybase. And it's a card that I bet a lot of you guys probably forgot existed, but Skybase, as you can imagine, is a base. So I assumed it would be something probably around the lines of a small town. Um, because if you look at Mother Base and Metal Gear Solid, for example, that's kind of like almost like a village, depending on how big you expand it, obviously. Um, I figured it was probably bigger than like a couple of football pitches, uh, maybe just like three put together or something like that. Yeah, that's how I, that's that's my interpretation of Apocalypse Sky Base. So that's why I put it in at this number. The next monster we have is Infernoid Tierra. Now you're probably wondering, how did you reach that conclusion? Well, let's explain. So Tierra is basically the fusion monster combining a Tyndale, Systemus, uh, even a Nunku and Deviari. It actually combines pretty much every Infernoid, and all those Infernoids are based off of demons in hell. I would imagine that those kind of things are probably really big on their own, just Atondel, Systemus, Deviari, and Anonku. They're probably pretty big on their own, maybe not the size of like Obelisk, the size of an arena, but if you fuse them all together, and you fuse like eight or ten of them all together, <laughs> uh, which is, that's what you get when you, that, that's Tierra, it's just the combination of all of them. So on the card art, it looks really huge, and it's like, it's got mountains in the background and stuff like that. So Tierra is a pretty big card, pretty big card. Next up, we come to the top three. Number three, we have Cosmo Dark Planet. Now, uh, Cosmo Dark Planet. Well, it's pretty a simple explanation. There's not really much to say. And I just want to mention as well, the gap between the top three and the previous ones is absolutely massive. Like, just look, just thinking about the, the previous ones, like an island, sure, an island is pretty big. Even like the, even, even like the size of like a continent, that, that's big, right? But then like you go to the, these top three and they're galactic levels of big. So, um, yeah. Number three, Dark Planet. That's because if we look at Star Wars, Star, Star Killer Base, the Death Star, they're probably the size of like, like a really big moon. Again, we don't really know to, to scale how big the Death Star and the Star Killer Base is. A lot of you Star Wars fans probably do, because I'm sure there's a whole fucking like encyclopedia dedicated to this one question of how big the Death Star is. Safe to assume that that's what Dark Planet's based off of, which we know it kind of is based off the Death Star, and it's, yeah, it's galactic proportions of large. So that's number three, Cosmo Dark Planet. Number two, and that is Star Eater. Star Eater, as you can imagine by the name, it's a dragon that eats suns <laughs> that is massive and uh it's so big that it only has 3200 attack so i don't know how that works dark planet has more attack so you could argue that's maybe bigger than star eater probably not but in terms of actual size and not attack star eater you can't really get much bigger than a, a, a dragon eating stars now fun fact star eater is actually kind of a bad almost pretty much a mistranslation um, in Japanese, uh, star yiryu, I think it's pronounced, or something like that, is, uh, doesn't actually mean eating, there's nothing to do with eating, you know, there's, I don't know where that, that came from. Uh, the original Japanese name kind of transliterates to star form dragon, so it's not really a star, a, a dragon that eats stars, it's a dragon in the form of a star. So before we get to number one, we should probably mention some notable shoutouts, uh, Ra, Slifer, um, all these god cards, I did mention them at the start. Uh, galaxy eyes monsters and um, those things are really big and in the anime those are huge but i don't think they were probably about the size of like the god cards um another one that i really wanted to mention that i was just about to make number one in this video but decided it wasn't because it was apparently it was in the anime and it was helios the primordial sun and you're probably wondering what the hell is helios the primordial sun uh you know that annoying floodgate you guys have been playing for like the past like how many years against like decks that rely on the graveyard like mermel 
uh, Macrocosmos. You know, the, you know, if you read Macrocosmos, it has a different effect. It doesn't just banish all cards, surprisingly. You know, you can warning Macrocosmos. Isn't that crazy? Like, that's actually insane. You can warning Macrocosmos if you really don't want your uh, stuff getting banished. That's that aside. The monster Macrocosmos says that it summons a monster. It summons a monster called. Helios the Primordial Sun, and if we look at the artwork of Helios the Primordial Sun, it's a sun on a head, on a body. Like a, the, the, the head is a sun. So, if a dragon is eating suns, and this card is, like, the, the head is a sun, well, this had to be number one. But, apparently this was summoned to anime in GX era, and it was just the normal guy. So, he doesn't have much attack anyway, it depends how many cards you have banished, but yeah, I think we all know what number one is. Moving on, number one, we have Dyson Sphere. For those of you who don't know what Dyson Sphere is, um, basically what a Dyson Sphere is, uh, if you can imagine, tons of solar panels around a sun. That's it. It's just a giant ring around a star uh, that harvests all its energies. So yeah, uh, depending on how big the star is, well, that's how big Dyson Sphere is. So... Really, it could be a lot smaller than we think. It could be a lot bigger than we think. But you can probably imagine that circling a sun is pretty big. Pretty big. So, yeah. These have been the top 10 biggest monsters by size in Yu-Gi-Oh. Um, let me know what you guys think down below. If you want more kind of fun videos like this, uh, I'd love to do um, the smallest monsters in Yu-Gi-Oh, perhaps. But, yeah, if you want more videos like this, let me know. And if you, miss, if I, if you think I missed out any other ones uh, or you think the order I put them in is a little bit wrong, Feel free to comment. I'd love to know what your opinions are and comment, like, subscribe. See you next time.